Welcome to Core Finance, and uh, we're here with uh, Matthew Yates, who's an investment manager at Seven Investment Management. How's your day, Matthew? Very well, Zach. Good morning. Good morning. I've chosen the easy description of your title because I can't say the other word. Quantitative. Yeah, I can't say that. So it's okay. Quant. You know, I like to say quant, I'm, like Mary Quant. I'm well practiced, so quant is fine for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's have a look at the uh, markets today. And uh, the headline, I suppose, the big, the big story of the day, UK inflation data uh, drops to 2.6%. Uh, I suppose even if it was 26%, the Bank of England wouldn't be raising rates. So dropping to 26 means that they're in the clear for a while. Well, yeah, I think uh, the market was pricing, well, what did it come off, 2.9 yeah. uh, last month. And certainly it was a bit of a shock. Um, I don't think it was so much that the markets were pricing in a rate hike anyway. Certainly the rates market this morning was suggesting that the chances of a rate hike on the back of the news on the expected continued inflation um, strength w was relatively low. But with inflation just pulling back a slight bit, I think, yeah, the chances of a rate uh, hike in the near future are, are somewhat muted. But I, I, I don't think it negates the longer term trend of um, inflation still outstripping wage growth in the UK. So in real terms, although it's not quite as strong a theme as it was before, people are in real terms getting poorer. That's a nice happy message. Um, next up, we've got uh, Royal Mail where uh, uh, people, well, it's, it's basically, a, it's a pensions deficit uh, disaster zone, isn't it, really, um, this company? Well, it's, it's disaster on many fronts, but uh, obviously the letter writing is not big these days. You know? <laughs> uh, people don't get their quill out and start writing on the papyrus very much. Yeah, so I, I suppose pensions one point, it's a bit like, you know, the story of BA, you know, a pension scheme with an airline on the side. So, you know, that's an overhang constantly for, for Royal Mail. Um, but yeah, one would hope or one would have thought that last year the, the Brexit, the, the referendum um, on EU membership would have led to a, a bit of a boost for Royal Mail because the Royal Mail delivered 27 million letters last year, those little pamphlets, if you remember, um, outlining the facts around Brexit. Uh, you would think that would be a boost, but actually following the result, commercial sales of commercial letters <laughs> as a result, because it clearly did very little to sway the public, uh, were down significantly. So I think a, kind of a headline level, um, there's you know, potential good news for Royal Mail, but when you dig down a little bit deeper, it's, it's not all good. Well, the revenues rocketed, uh, they reported to have rocketed today, they were up 1%, so um, and that could really be transformational, couldn't it? Um, let's go on to um, the next, well, the AIM stock of the day, which is Pantheon Resources. Uh, those with long memories will remember that, uh, that the, there was a bit of a hiccup there uh, for this company uh, in November, where it, when it encountered a dry well in Texas, as uh, one does, if one is um, an oil and gas operator there, these things tend to happen. But... Uh, Last week, or uh, on the 14th of July, the shares uh, jumped 25% after the company revealed a transformational contract with the largest US energy infrastructure company to in install and operate a new gas processing facility. Doesn't sound that transformational to me, but uh, the shares did bounce a bit, and we'll see whether they're at, uh, I think they're around 53p at the moment, whether they can bounce back to the former glories at £1.80 before they hit that dry well. Now, the pound, um, clearly affected by the uh, softer inflation figures, um, it's weakened off the 131 handle uh, this morning. And um, I suppose euro, euro sterling as well, back above 88. Um, pound at the top of the range against the dollar? Is it, is it, is it a dollar story, really, that's uh, driving this cross? A bit of both. I, I think it's interesting, actually, um, so it was a 10-month high this morning before kind of the news, but actually pound, the pound started to wobble a little bit before that. So even before the announcement came out, uh, you saw it kind of pulling back a little bit. I think, yeah, I, th I think we talk about the, the, the weaker inflation data in the UK today, you know, people piling back rate expectations and substance but, you know, uh, subsequently putting pressure downward on the currency. But I think that's a US story as well. You know, US I inflation the strength and the kind of the post-Trump reflationary theme isn't as strong as it was. We've seen that par back kind of significantly. So although I think it's towards the upper end of where it's been in the kind of the last year, I think that's a very extreme kind of range to look at. And so I think, you know, we're at the highs of where we've been on a one-year basis, but I, I think there's a potential for the pound to go high. Okay, let's go on uh, to broker recommendations. And this is... Uh ITV, which was, I suppose, the stock of the day yesterday on the news of the appointment of EasyJet's Karen 
uh, McCall uh, as new CEO. Um, HSB seemed to be rather nonplussed. Uh, they were previously on a hold, and they're still on a hold, and uh, they lowered their target at 200 pence. Shares currently around 180. Um, but uh, um, Dame Carolyn, um, regarded as having done a great job at EasyJet over the last seven years, uh, my view is that probably Coco the Clown could have done an uh, equally good job because it's just been a growth business, hasn't it, really, EasyJet? Yeah, I mean, um, that kind of theme of travel becoming kind of cheaper for more. <laughs> I mean, I, I use EasyJet quite a lot, so, you know, <laughs> and I don't think it's as bad as the rep it, you know, it used to have. Certainly that kind of name in the dirt reputation seems to have improved. I think that's, that's, that's reserved for Ryanair, isn't it? <laughs> uh, no, but uh, let's, uh, let's go along to the uh, core number, which uh, 104 million um, is apparently a, a big statistic over the last 24 hours. 104 million is the number of Netflix subscribers. Um, so this theme, I suppose, of uh, new media, of, of the Amazons and the Googles and the Netflix of this world uh, driving um, kind of content consumption and becoming real businesses now. You know, this is moving away from, I suppose, the idea of kind of a YouTube type free consumption, free streaming, uh, to the point where you've got a business like Netflix that can attract such a huge number of, of, of subscribers. Some might say it's 104 million people with uh, too much time on their hands. <laughs> some would, some would, but not me. Okay. Economic calendar, import, export prices are definitely uh, second division data there from the US, but uh, Mark Carney speaking uh, this afternoon, apparently is it that, that's coinciding with uh, the launch of the £10 note or something like that? Is that um, I'm not sure about the £10 note. Um, I'm not sure what he's meant to be talking about um, specifically, I think, um, really the look forward for the Bank of England is going to be kind of next month's rate increase and or decrease or, you know, whatever they're going to do with rates next month. And can, that's going to be closely watched, whether he'll signal at all, um, given today's data, you know, that, that'll be wait to see. Matthew Yates, Investment Manager at 7 Investment Management. Thanks for opening the core finance show today. Thank you.